Hi everybody, Brendan from c21teaching.com.au here. In today's Flip to Teach professional learning video, I'm going to be showing you how to insert columns into a spreadsheet and update the formulas to ensure that you are getting accurate results. Now, there's a few reasons why you might want to do this. You might be entering some new data from a new assessment test into your spreadsheet, or you might be adding in a new week's worth of data. There are a range of different reasons. What you can see here on the screen is some dummy data that I've set up. You can see we've got column with student names, term one, term two, growth and percentage variations as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in term three and we're going to update the formula so that it reflects the relevant, the new data. So what we're going to do is on column C here, we're going to right click and we are going to insert one right. So what that does is it inserts one column to the right. We'll update the header and then we're going to put in the results. Okay, so you can see that we've entered the data for each student for term three. What we now need to do is we need to update the formulas. So down the bottom, we'll start down here. We've got the average formulas. This gives a average of the results for each term for the whole class. Now this is actually a really easy one to add in. So what we can do is we select the formula, one of the formulas here and we grab this little square down here and we click and we drag across and this auto fills the formula across. So you can see here with term two, if we come up to the formula bar, we can see that it has the formula equals average C2 to C16, which is that range there. We've dragged filled that across for T3 and you can see we've now got average D2 to D16. So we know that that formula is correct. We now need to add that formula into the growth and percentage. Now, how you do this is up to you. You might want to focus on the growth from term one to term three, or you might want to have another one, uh, another growth and percentage column over here for term two to term three. It's entirely up to you. Um, I'm going to go term one to term three because that's what I want to look at. So at the moment, what we're looking at is so equals sum C2 to B minus B2, which means we're looking at term two minus term one and it's going to give us the result of that as a number. You can see here we've got plus one, we've got negative one, two, 12, zero, which means there was no growth, it was flat. That includes the averages. I've put in an average, uh, the averages for the growth. The next column across is the percentages. So let's go through and let's, add, let's adapt the formula that we've got to give us the growth from term one to term three. So what I need to do is I need to come into the formula bar and you can see here that the cell references have changed color. So C2 is orange, B2 is purple. You can see here C, the cell C2 has an orange dotted rectangle around it, while B2 has a purple one. That tells you the cells that the formula is looking at. So what I can do here is I can actually change the formula. If I click here, if I change the C to a D and then come back up, so you can see now that the orange rectangle has changed. It's now around the term three cell. And you can also see that the result has changed. Now that's the growth, the percentage formula has updated automatically because of the way that formula is structured. You can see here that we're looking at E2, the growth number, divided by B2, the raw mark from term one, multiplied by 100. So this one we don't need to update, okay? That one is fine as it is. To save some work, to allow us to fix up the other formulas, we're going to click and drag. Oh, didn't quite get all the way there down to the bottom and you can see that those formulas automatically changed and you can see that if we have a look at the formulas for E2 up here in the formula bar you can see that they're each now looking at D column and B column so that tells us so that tells us that those formulas have been updated correctly and that they're now looking at the relevant cells that's one side of things the other side of things that you might want to look at is you might want to have a total column so let's just set this up equals sum Okay, so you might want to have total. So what I've done here is I've, en I've entered in a, a new column called total. At the moment, I've set it to just look at term one and term two because that was the original data set that we had. We now need to adjust those formulas to include term three. So what we are going to do is we are going to come up to the formula bar. 
we're going to click so the cursor is flashing in the formula bar and we're going to change C2 to say D2. And you can see that straight away that number has updated because it is now looking at the range B2 to D2. And you can see that the orange rectangle is highlighting around those three cells, which tells us that that's where that formula is pointing to. We can save some time by down filling. So get the, oh, so the little blue square in the bottom right hand corner of the cell G2. We click and drag that down. And you can see those numbers have all updated to reflect the fact that they're now totaling term one, term two, and term three. If you want to do averages for that for each student, so you need to go into the new cell. Uh, so we're gonna go into H cell. We've given that column a title average. The formula is equals. Type in AV and Google Sheets will bring up the predictor, select average. It enters the bracket automatically. So you can see here, it gives us an idea of how the formula should look. Value one, comma, value two, and so on. So what we can do is we can simply click and drag to select the cells that we want. And you can see that in the cell H2, it is giving us a what the formula will look like and also a prediction of what that result will look like. If that's what you want, release the click, press enter, and it will put the closing bracket in automatically and it has now given us that answer. We click and drag to downfill and straight away it's given us all of those numbers. Now you can see that it's got the result out to several uh, decimal places there. That can be fixed quite simply. We simply go to the toolbar up here and you can see we've got decreased decimal place or increased decimal place. We're going to decrease the number of decimal places. We'll just go down to one decimal place. You might want to have two or three. That's entirely up to you, but that's how you do that function. That's all the time we have for in this video. I hope it's been helpful. For more helpful videos like this, please head to c21teaching.com.au and click on the FTPL videos link. Thanks very much for watching.